Hi everyone, it's Nettie at Nettie's Dolls, and I'm hoping you're having a wonderful weekend. Today I'd like to talk about my Lika Dolls. Uh, I'm going to share some of my collection with you, and I'm going to try to do it by generation, so with Gen 1 to the current day. And let's begin. So, so Jen, I have a little uh, some notes here. There's great information on the uh, history of Lika, and I'll share two sites that I think are really good. I'm sure there's many out there. Uh, a lot of the Japanese uh, websites are great, but unless you speak Japanese, you're going to need to have some kind of translator program on your um, computer or your handheld device. Yeah, anyway, uh, that sounds really technical. So um, I'm going to start with Generation 1, and she started uh, in 1967. And here she is. This is my um, Gen 1 that I have. She's genuine. She's the only one I have, and that's good enough for me. And I was really surprised when I got her um, because she's a lot larger. Or I shouldn't say a lot larger, but she's bigger than the reproduction gen generation Lika dolls, which I believe the first reproduction came out in 1999. So this girl is not a 1967 girl, but she is definitely before 1972. So I was really happy to get her. They're pretty expensive. Um, you know, you'll be looking to pay uh, upwards to around, I don't know. They seem to average around $200. I paid significantly less for this girl, and she was really battered up. Um, and I cleaned her up and I'm really happy with how she turned out. So her hair was a mess, a hot mess. And this, I'm not a great at, um, cleaning dolls up, but I can tell you that from the way she started off, she looks much better. So, and I'll go right to show you a reproduction. So this is reproduction. Uh, my, some of my girls that I have. So this girl here, she's a tanned version of the Gen 1 reproduction, and she is um, a bubble cut, or I believe they call them in an afro cut in Japan. And then that was a shoe that dropped. <laughs> and here's another girl here, and her hair is so curly. And this is not her original outfit. I just, I redressed her. Yes, she's the one that just dropped her shoe off. So you can take a look at them side by side. And you can see that they have one dot, one white dot. And that is what distinguishes the Gen 1 dolls in the reproduction. And the reproduction dolls are actually a little smaller. Uh, my understanding was that Dakara had broken the mold for the Gen 1s. And so they had to use a Gen 1 to make a reproductive reproduction. So even though I've Maybe you can see a little, you can see a difference here, how they are smaller. And one thing that I do love about the Gen 1s, uh, the reproductions especially, are their long arms. Really cute. So, that is my Gen 1s and Gen uh, 1 reproductions. Now I'm going to go on to a Gen 2. And I don't think I have a, I don't think I have a repro here listed, but... Here is a Gen 2, and you can see she's got two dots. She's adorable, and I've redressed her. And her hair, you know, it's messed. I didn't, this is pretty good. Most of these dolls are very played with condition, as you'll see in this little girl here. Look at her. <laughs> she is um, a well-loved doll, and her face is really dirty, or kind of stained, and her arms too. So I dressed her in this little outfit with boots, because I consider that she likes to garden and she gets really dirty when she gardens. So I kept her like this. I think she's beautiful. I don't mind. I like to garden. And that's my Gen 2. One of my Gen 2s. And here is another Gen 2. And I believe I'm just going to take a look at the eyes. So there are some differences in the Gen 2s. And... Barb, I think it's uh, barbiegirl.com has uh, some really good views of the different dolls. And if you look closely, you'll see there are slight differences in their, um, in the way their dots sit in the eyes. It takes a trained eye. I, 
I can't tell right from the get-go. Like, I couldn't say, oh, that one's from 1972. But anyway, speaking of, the Gen 2 started in 1972, and she was considered the new Leica. And I will just show her against the Gen 1, the genuine Gen 1 here. There you go. And then, in 1983, came the Gen 3. And that's the Gen 3. And she was, um, she's really cute. She has a button nose. And this one is original in her outfit. I did have her in a box. And I deboxed her years ago. She looks great. And she's got like a, this cute little button nose. And her ears don't stick out as much as the Gen 2. And then in 1987 came the Gen 4, what we refer to as the Gen 4 Liga doll. And here's an example of a Gen 4. This is the girl that we all, you know, see nowadays. Now there are some differences between the Dakara Jenny, I mean, sorry, Dakara Liga dolls that are made in Japan and the ones that are now Dakara Tomi that are made in China. They're both really cute. I, f I would like to do a review on the various um, Dakaras that are made now. One of these days I'm going to do that. And I, and I have noticed this differences in the bodies and uh, the durability. Uh, I found that Dakara China the bodies in Dakar, China don't hold up as well, and there's a lot of breakage around the shoulder. Um, that one girl dropped, but here's another view real quick. And here's another example. So, uh, and here's the other thing about um, Lika dolls. So you have Dakara Tomi and Dakara Lika dolls, and you also have Dakara Lika dolls that are made in Lika Castle. And these are really high quality dolls. And here's an example of a unboxed Lika. And I just put her hair back in a little clip. And this is what they come like when they come from Lika Castle, the dressier dolls are like this. Sorry for the reflection, I'm not gonna unbox her. And she's got her little shoes. And it says in the back, original doll. Or what is it? Made in Japan, castle original doll. And you may also, if you ever go to Lika Castle, I haven't yet, I hope to one day. They also package them like this. And it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that these are the girls that when you go to Lika Castle, you can pick out a doll that you want. And I happened to um, long ago bought this bubble cut. And um, I think she's cute. But anyway, they'll come like this and you pick out a dress that you want and shoes and a hat. And then um, the small shop in Tokyo, my daughter went there uh, in December and unfortunately the week that she went, it was closed so she didn't get to go in it. But I do have a really special Lika that was made from the small shop Lika Castle, which is kind of geared more for collectors. And that's her hair, it's very crimped. So that was a real, uh, just quickie. And then I did want to show you, oh, there's one other doll I was hoping that I had out, but I don't, I'll have to do it in another review. But here's an example of a Lika Middle School. She's not the high school, but she's the middle school. And funny that um, her face mold really looks like um, Izumi, her friend, uh, which is the third or this, the fourth generation Izumi. I think she's really cute and I wanted to show her. And she is small. She is, let me see, compared to, she's just a little slightly taller maybe? Slightly taller than the Gen 4. And that's it. I know it was a little clumsy review, but, oh, another, sorry. I haven't ended it yet. And then here is, I, I did want to show you 
Um, this is a Gen 4 that I put on a, a Pure Nemo body, which is the extra small size. I really like them for posing. I mean, the Lika dolls are posable. They have uh, little wires in their legs and you can bend them, but I don't want to bend mine, you know. I, I like them just the way they are. So anyway, that was a short uh, down and dirty review of some Lika dolls that I have and hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe. And I hope to do more of my Lika dolls in the future. Everybody have a great day. Bye.